Hello, brothers and sisters. I'm Ogre6, and I've just stepped out of work for a quick smoke. At first, obviously, I'm thinking of cigarettes. That leads to thinking of Sigourney Weaver, presumably because her first name shares a couple of syllables with the word cigarettes. Also, she has such interest in lips. It's a pleasure to watch that woman smoke. That leads to thinking of Alien, of course. I'm a horror movie fan and constitutionally incapable of thinking of Sigourney Weaver, or, for that matter, of Tom Skerritt, Veronica Cartwright, or Harry Dean Stanton, without thinking of Alien. That leads to thinking of Deep Throat, for reasons that might occur to you if you've seen Alien, poor John Hurt. That leads to thinking of Linda Lovelace, the star of Deep Throat, and that leads to thinking of Blackie Lawless, the former frontman of the 80s hairband Wasp. Loveless, Lawless, the names are not entirely dissimilar, and although Blackie was not in Deep Throat, you know he would have jumped at the chance. I begin to sing their old song, Inside the Electric Circus, to myself. That leads to thinking of the Cirque du Soleil, the world's coolest circus. I am fascinated by their shows and have several on video cassette. I'm fascinated mostly by their sense of artistry, but also by the apparent sheer impossibility of those crazy acrobatic things they do. That shouldn't be possible, should it? That leads to thinking of the Biscuits. For them as ain't in the know, that's the family's affectionate nickname for the twin boys Mama adopted some years ago. When they were very young, they were heavily into gymnastics, and I wish they'd kept it up. It would be cool if they wanted to run away and join the circus, the way kids in the old stories always did. I would support that. You gotta have dreams, right? But they haven't. These days, the closest they ever get to doing anything acrobatic is skateboard tricks. That leads to thinking about Jimmy Weibel, a high school friend, all-around cool dude, and a bit of a skate rat. I have no idea where he is or what's become of him. I've neither seen nor spoken to the boy in over twenty years, but I hope he's well and happy. We had some good times together. That leads to thinking of smoking pot out of Dr. Pepper can. This is a trick I learned from Weibel, sitting under the I-64 overpass on Wilkinson Road. To do this, you must punch several small holes in the side of the can. I'm sure there are tools designed for making pinholes in a sheet of aluminum, but whatever they are, they aren't the sort of thing a teenage boy is liable to have in his pocket. So, to achieve our goal, we removed the metal shields from our lighters. The corners where they attach the plastic are quite sharp, and we could punch the holes with those. I would never be able to come up with something like that now, as an adult. I am awestruck by our resourcefulness as children. That leads to thinking about the anarchist cookbook, which I understand is still making the rounds of the American public school system and is the be-all, end-all textbook on resourcefulness. If you had asked me when I was 15 what my favorite book was, I would have said the anarchist cookbook. It would not have been true... I would have said that just in an effort to appear cool and dangerous. But I did spend considerable time on it and gained a lot of knowledge that the world might have been a better place for having kept from me. I still occasionally peruse an online edition, a fact which I hope has escaped the attention of the FBI. I have been told that in this post-9-11 world it is illegal to own a print copy of the book. I don't think I believe that. But if it's true, I must obtain one, not because I expect to use it, but as a big old fuck-off to the government. That leads to thinking about being arrested. I have some small experience in this area. I remember Pop coming to visit me in jail once and asking how I was doing. I said, actually, not that bad. It was a bitch at first, because I was in holding and you aren't allowed to smoke in the holding cells. Now that I'm a general population, they've returned my smokes to me, and I'm okay. I think I'd be all right in hell if they let me smoke there. And that leads to thinking about cigarettes, and so my thoughts have come full circle. I look down at the cigarette in my hand. It's nearly finished, and I think what a good friend these little white sticks have been to me. Always loyal, always comforting, whatever's come and wherever my path has led. I take a last drag and carefully put it out and slip it gently into my pocket.